Boy, a lot of breaking developments today on the J6 front. It seems like all of a sudden, everybody wants to testify. Former White House counsel Pat Cipollone testifies for eight hours to the J6 committee. Steve Bannon is trying to negotiate a deal where he would appear and testify before Congress. And now even Stuart Rhodes, head of the Oath Keepers, is trying to find a way to save his skin and he's talking about testifying. You know, when it's all in the history books, today might prove to be a really bad day for Donald Trump. Let's talk about that, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So lots of breaking news stories today on the J6 front and they all involve testimony. Testimony about, in a very real sense, testimony against Donald Trump. Pat Cipollone, Steve Bannon, and Stuart, don't call me Elmer, Rhodes. Elmer is his real name. Let's start with Pat Cipollone. As we all know, former White House counsel in the Trump White House, Pat Cipollone sat for eight hours of testimony before the January 6th Select Committee investigating the insurrection. We've gotten some reporting. We don't know a lot about what he said, but he didn't invoke his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. And he may have tried to invoke executive privilege on some topics. We don't know that yet for sure, but here's my take. You know, Pat Cipollone is not all that patriotic, it seems, but he's not stupid. And there are witnesses like Steve Bannon and Roger Stone and John Eastman and Rudy Giuliani who will recklessly claim bogus privileges to try to keep from testifying, to try to keep from incriminating Donald Trump, perhaps incriminating themselves in the process. But I actually don't think Pat Cipollone is the kind of guy who would recklessly invoke privileges that don't apply. Why? Because if he invokes bogus privileges, legal privileges, to cover up the crimes of Donald Trump, he will very likely be committing crimes himself. And I don't think that's a position that Pat Cipollone is going to put himself in. You know, if he was afraid of incriminating himself, he probably would have invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination today during the course of his eight hours of testimony. But Representative Zoe Lofgren has already gone on record as saying during that eight hours, Cipollone did not plead the Fifth. That's an important data point. So I have a feeling Cipollone did not invoke bogus privileges, executive privilege or otherwise, to cover up the crimes and the fraud of Donald Trump. So when the history books are written and when all is revealed regarding Pat Cipollone's testimony, I have a feeling it might turn out that um, today was a really bad day for Donald Trump. Stay tuned. How about Steve Bannon? All of a sudden, as Steve Bannon's trial date approaches, because remember, he is indicted for contempt of Congress for thumbing his nose at a lawfully issued congressional subpoena. He didn't want to testify and incriminate Donald Trump. So instead, he committed the crime of contempt of Congress, refused to testify. He's been indicted. He's pending trial. And lo and behold, all of a sudden, it looks like he may want to testify to the January 6th committee. First of all, I trust Steve Bannon exactly as far as I can throw Steve Bannon. However, when Congress refers somebody for prosecution, for defying subpoenas, contempt of Congress, there really are two goals that Congress has in mind. One, they want the person who defied their subpoena, who committed the crime of contempt, 
to be held accountable and punished for that crime. But the second goal is to inspire that person's cooperation and maybe even strike a deal as a defendant with the Department of Justice that includes a truthful appearance before the Congressional Committee, before the J6 Committee. So we don't know if that is the sort of negotiating dance that Steve Bannon is doing right now with the federal prosecutors, but it wouldn't surprise me because the prosecutors could very well say, okay, defendant Bannon, you got one last chance. You're pending trial and we will take you to trial and bang you out, convict you and put you in prison because there's a mandatory prison term if you're convicted of contempt of Congress. Or you can agree to te testify truthfully, fully, and accurately before the January 6th committee. And if you do that, we will dismiss your contempt of Congress case. So it's not exactly a win-win because Bannon is not ultimately held accountable for the crime he committed to try to cover up for Donald Trump, but at least the J6 committee would get what it needs. And by extension, because all of these J6 transcripts, friends, will be going over to the Department of Justice for eventual prosecutions of Trump and company, I predict, they will be getting what they need if this is a deal that the Department of Justice strikes with Steve Bannon. Again, today could be a really bad development for Donald Trump. And here's one thing before I move on to Elmer Rhodes. The other people that should be worried today about Steve Bannon's negotiations with the Department of Justice are guys like Roger Stone and Rudy Giuliani, maybe even Mike Flynn, because boy, Steve Bannon could give them up hard if he ultimately decided to cooperate with the J6 Committee and the Department of Justice. Again, I'll believe it when I see it. Let's move on to Elmer Rhodes. Elmer Rhodes, head of the Oath Keepers. First of all, stick a fork in him, he's done. I mean, the evidence against him is overwhelming and a jury will convict him if he decides to go to trial on the seditious conspiracy case that's been indicted against him. But today, we started to hear Elmer Rhodes might want to testify too. Now, it sounds like Elmer Rhodes is simply trying to find a way to weasel out of his criminal predicament or maybe reduce his exposure because if he were to cooperate, plead guilty and cooperate, perhaps he doesn't get a sentence that would result in him dying in prison. Perhaps he could get a reduced sentence in exchange for full truthful cooperation. But here's the condition that old Elmer is trying to set for himself. Today there was reporting where Elmer Rhodes said, well, I'll testify to the J6 committee, but only if it's live. You know, oh, but of course I'm not gonna turn it into a circus or anything, just trust me because, hey, I'm Elmer Rhodes, right? Eye patch and all. Shot his own eye out is the reporting, and he was a firearm safety instructor. So, this may be the opening of negotiations between defendant Elmer Rhodes and the Department of Justice. We don't quite know. But if there is the possibility of a guy like Elmer Rhodes pleading guilty and testifying fully and truthfully, boy, that could prove an important link in the chain from the Oath Keepers to, I predict, the War Council at the Willard Hotel the Roger Stones and the Steve Bannons, the Rudy Giuliani's, the Mike Flynn's, and that will provide an important link from the Willard Hotel to the Oval Office. We have to wait and see if the Department of Justice is able to build that chain of incriminating evidence, but boy, I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling. I think today with these developments, um, Justice is gaining momentum. I, I only say that when I believe it. And you have heard a lot of heavy sighs and exasperation and frustration out of me. Um, but when we have a good day on the justice front, we need to embrace it. We need to be encouraged. We need to be realistically optimistic, not Pollyanna. Pollyanna. 
but I feel like justice gained some momentum today and let's hope it keeps trending toward accountability. I think the next big step will be Tuesday's January 6th public hearings because some of the members of Congress, some of the members of the J6 committee have been saying, hold on tight. Because yes, we saw Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony where she said Donald Trump wanted to lead an armed attack on the Capitol, take down the metal detectors, let my people with weapons in because they're not here to hurt me. They're here to hurt the people up the street in the Capitol who are certifying the win of my political opponent. Take down the metal detectors and then we will march, weapons and all, on the U.S. Capitol and we'll stop the certification. And as we now know, courtesy of that brave 25-year-old woman, Cassidy Hutchinson, Pat Cipollone said, boy, if that happens, we will be charged with every crime imaginable. We're getting there, folks. Hang tough. Hang tough. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.